Welcome to the Lab 3 Humidity and Dew Point Lab Description. For parts 1 and 2 of the lab, you will be using your weekly weather observation and weekly weather report as usual. Please check out the video if you have any uh, questions or you need to review that part of the lab. For the sling psychrometer part of the lab, you'll be measuring the humidity and dew point inside and outside using a sling psychrometer. You'll need to make sure you have set up your psychrometer as shown in the weather station setup video prior to uh, the starting this lab. You will also want to make sure that you have your hygrometer pulled out as well to measure humidity inside and outside. It might take a few minutes to adjust to its new location, so make sure uh, that you set it out early. To start, uh, choose your locations, then wet the cotton on your psychrometer. It's on one of the two thermometers. This will be your wet bulb or TW temperature. The other thermometer will be your dry bulb or TA, which is also the air temperature. You will then sw swing the psychrometer around for one to three minutes and then record the temperature of the two thermometers right away. To get the dew point and humidity, you will use what's called the temperature difference or the wet bulb depression, delta T on many of your documents, and the provided charts to get your dew point and to get your humidity using the different number values and meeting across. The next part of the lab involves using a metal cup or container to figure out your dew point. So you can use any metal cup. You can use um, a can, soup can, soda can, they'll all work fine. You want a thermometer, some water, and also ice as well. You want to fill up the a can halfway with cool water, slowly adding ice, allowing all of that ice to melt completely before adding the next piece. Once you see condensation on the outside of your can, you can take the temperature measurement and that measurement will tell you what the dew point temperature is uh, of the air because you'll have the dew forming on the outside of your cup. The data summary part of the lab is simply condensing all of your data into one table to make comparisons easier. You may notice the tables have been shaded to keep the inside outside value straight, so pay attention to that. The air parcel comparison part involves doing some calculations, all shown on your lab, for three hypothetical air parcels and then creating one graph showing all three parcels. The data you will need is provided in the Excel sheet online. Uh, the next part, the humidity experiment part, involves actually doing an experiment at home. You can use any kind of clear container. So you're going to take a clear container, your hygrometer, and thermometer. And using a clear container, anything you want works fine. So here are some examples of what you could possibly use. All of these work great. You're going to put your setup into a window or under a heat lamp. Make sure it's sealed tight with the thermometer and the hygrometer inside. You want to make sure your container is dry and sealed tightly. Follow the lab instructions regarding the time measurements uh, in case they have changed from what I'm saying here. It should be run for about an hour and a half. The goal is to take measurements while the container is in the sun or under a light and then when it's not and when it's cooling down. So you could put it in a fridge or into a bowl of ice. Once you have that data, please construct a, a graph showing how temperature and humidity changed over time, and then use it to help answer the questions in your lab. You can work on other portions of the lab while this experiment runs. Students often take uh, a f timer, set it for five minutes so that they know when to go back and collect their data. The last part of the lab involves decoding air pressure. So this map should hopefully look familiar. This weather map is provided online. So just as you decoded station models back in week one, you will decode every single station on the map. It looks daunting at first because there's so many, but it's really the same process over and over and over again. When decoding the air pressure, if the three digit value starts with a six, seven, eight, or nine, you add a nine to the front. If the three digit value starts with anything else, you put a 10 in front. In both cases, you add one decimal point to the end. Be sure you decode 
your pressures and you write it right next to the station because in future weeks you're going to be using that decoded air pressure to contour this map. As always, please email me or attend office hours if you have any questions.